Well, it's typhoon season in Japan. And Japan is in what's called Typhoon Alley. More of that later. Uh, but I want to share with you uh, seven things I've learned about typhoons in Japan. Plus, I want to share with you four reflections I had after I stayed on the boat during a super typhoon in 2019. And as a bonus, I want to share with you three tips from a cruising in Japan expert and specialist, Kirk Patterson. And he has given me permission to share those tips with you. So stay tuned um, and welcome to Pacific Solo. I've set myself the ambitious goal of sailing across the North Pacific before I'm 70. I want to go through the Great Pacific Garbage Patch to a place I've called Nemo North, which is just a notional point of coordinates. And then I want to get on to Vancouver. And I had planned to go this year to see my mom before she forgets who I am. But alas, that was too ambitious. So now I'm cruising Japan, learning how to sail, learning more about my boat, Wahine. So please join me as a rookie sailor trying to realize a dream. Well, after a few glorious weeks of sailing the west coast of Shikoku, uh, we came to Oita, Wahine and I, and we rounded the Cape. That was a bit of a surprise. The, that voyage, about 40 nautical miles, was uneventful, except for the very turbulent and strong currents rounding the Cape uh, by the lighthouse. Uh, we dropped from seven knots to under four knots at times. Uh, in the distance, as we approached the Cape, I saw what looked like waves breaking over a coral reef, but it turned out to be actually these currents. And then as we approached Oita Airport, and the marina is just on, on the landward side of the airport uh, with a little inlet, uh, we dropped the main and the jib and sailed in. And now Wahine and I are gonna be based there for the next few weeks, preparing for the JCI inspection and doing a number of other boat projects. It's an unusual place. Uh, some of my meals have been at the airport and the night, uh, uh, just a few nights ago, uh, the senior air traffic controller was at the sushi bar at the airport and he was treating me to all kinds of sushi delicacies. Uh, so the people, whether in the airport or in the villages nearby, very friendly and helpful. However, just before I was about to leave the marina for the airport, I moved the boats within the marina at the request of the marina uh, leaders because of a typhoon approaching Okinawa right now, they were concerned, as I will be away a few days, that I should make sure the boat is in a better position in case a typhoon also comes through Kyushu. So that put me in the mindset and reminded me uh, we are in typhoon season. And so I would like to share with you in this episode seven things I've learned about typhoon season in Japan. But before we do that, uh, please, if you haven't already, uh, could you consider subscribing to this channel? It doesn't cost you anything. It does help me a lot and hopefully uh, will bring you some value as you get notified if you press the notification button. So please subscribe and please press the notification button. Uh, and that helps me a lot. The first thing I learned in coming to Japan um, is that typhoons are the same as hurricanes. I wondered if there had been some difference, but essentially a typhoon is in the Pacific and Asia, and, then that, and a hurricane is in the Atlantic, but they're both tropical cyclones, where it's a low pressure front that forms an eye in the middle and there becomes very strong winds. The second thing I've learned, every year on average, about 26 typhoons form in the Pacific, and affect Japan in some way. And they are formed really during, between the period of May and October, but August and September seem to be the most dangerous months. The third thing I've learned about typhoons in Japan is that out of the average of 26, about a dozen actually make landfall in Japan. Most of those are in Okinawa, then Kyushu and Shikoku, uh, and that's known as Typhoon alley, but the typhoons can make a direct hit on Japan further uh, east and north in Osaka, Nagoya, Tokyo, Tohoku, and even as far north as Hokkaido. Number four, 
when typhoons are reported and there's threats of them coming, um, and now the predictive uh, algorithms that the Japan Meteorological Agency uses are getting very adept at, at predicting further out the trajectory and the strength that these typhoons will take. But most of the reporting, and indeed most of the damage is caused by the rain and landslides. However, those in the marine world must also take notice of these things because of wind speed, wave speed, and to know which harbors uh, we should go to find refuge. The fifth thing I've learned about typhoons in Japan is that there are also super typhoons. These are essentially higher winds and a broader area, and often because they form slower over the North Pacific. The sixth thing I've learned about typhoons in Japan is that typhoons and hurricanes around the world are usually given names by the, let me read this, by the World Meteorological Organization's Tropical Cyclone Program. But some countries bestow their own names such as the Philippines, the super typhoon that wreaked havoc across several provinces and islands, particularly Leyte, and I visited that island shortly after the, 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 the typhoon hit. Uh, locally, they called it Yolanda, but globally it was called Haiyan. Japan has a similar practice, although instead of giving names, it gives numbers, and it counts the number of typhoons through the season. And number seven, there are refuge harbors where boats can make hasty retreat. And usually you don't want to make it too hasty. You want to get there plenty in advance. Um, and one of the famous ones, the first ones I visited was Aburu Subo. I didn't go there because there was a typhoon. I went there because it was a beauty spot. And when there is no typhoon, it's usually empty. And it's a great finger of water that comes in just close to Misaki. So those are the seven things I've learned about typhoons in Japan. Okay, let me share with you four reflections I had after I stayed on Wahine in October 2019. Number one is during times of storm, during a period of a storm, you can think about nothing else. Your world and time and space shrinks and the thought and safety of others does concern me at that point, but I was focused. And I think that's what a storm does. It brings focus and the ability to put energy into small micro tasks that can be life-saving. Number two, and relevant to that, is you learn a lot. You know, I didn't really take the bowl and not too seriously. I mean, I did, I practiced it, I passed my exams, etc. but I wasn't speedy at doing it. We'd get clumsy and I'd make a mistake. Well, that night I was forced to do a lot of bowl and knots as I had to rearrange fenders that were being thrown up on deck, et cetera, et cetera, secure things down. And that's just one thing I learned that night. Storms bring an opportunity for learning. So I don't wish a storm on anybody, including myself, but the things you learn can be valuable during times of storm. The third thing, which was a more reminder than a reflection, and having lived in disaster zones and a couple of war zones, uh, I've concluded, as is an obvious thing to say, but for me there's real kind of memories and images that illustrate this point to me, is that danger is a matter of proximity. A few meters in a war zone can make all the difference. And it reminded me that the boat needs to be in the right place, in the right position, in the right configuration, and you can minimize the risk. And my fourth reflection is, and again stating the obvious, the blue skies follow, and the world brightens, and you're richer for the experience. So those are my four reflections after Typhoon 19. Okay, I've got this, uh, I, I'll, I'll call him a friend. I don't know whether he called me a friend, but we've spent countless hours on the phone and text messaging the last two and a half years, even before I bought Wahine. Um, Kirk, like me, took up sailing later in life. Uh, he retired, went back to Canada from Japan, bought a boat, 
uh, learned how to sail, sailed up to Alaska, got a lot of solo experience, eventually sailed across the Pacific solo via a few months in Hawaii, and then became the first foreigner to circumnavigate Japan. And now, now that's become his passion to introduce Japan as cruising grounds for cruisers and sailors. And I reached out to him before this episode and asked, Kirk, what tips would you give to cruisers in Japan during typhoon season? And so I'll give the full um, advice in the description below. So check that out. And you can go directly to his website and find out more of the services Kirk has to offer. But the three things has to do with your lines and having plenty of them so you can create a spider web uh, off your aft, your fore, your starboard, your port, securing your boat uh, as much as possible. Secondly is you need to drop an anchor and in the description below you'll see the specific kind of anchor he suggests uh, that you drop. And the third tip he says find a safe harbor well in advance two or three days before the storm comes. So typhoon season in Japan where Hini and I are in Kyushu which is one of the islands hit a lot by typhoons not as much as Okinawa but uh, Kyushu and Shikoku are a lot, but all of Japan can be affected. So hopefully you found this helpful and informative. If you want to know more what it, what it's like to sail in Japan, particularly during uh, typhoon season. Hey, and check out um, the free course, 10 Tips to Change the Course of Your Life. Uh, here's a picture of the book. Uh, you can see uh, it's derived from that. I filmed it on my boat. It, the quality is pretty low. My fashion sense is even lower, uh, but that's not the point. I just want to share with you the 10 tips that have become fundamental to every life change I've made, and I've made several, including moving to Japan many years ago, um, and now applying those same principles to realizing this dream of learning to sail sailing around Japan and eventually and hopefully sailing solo across the Pacific. Click subscribe, click the no notification button, and I'll see you in the next episode.